You may recall that back in October, we planted 70,000 bulbs in the lawn area and experimented with several different planting methods, including bulb augering under sod and non-sod areas, removing the sod entirely and overlaying the bulbs with a compost topsoil mix, and employing the use of a bulb machine to insert bulbs underneath the grassy area. If the weather was anything like we had last year, we anticipated we'd start seeing bulbs in early March. But instead, we were met with record-breaking rain, freezing temperatures, and snow all the way up until the end of April. Not necessarily the most conducive weather patterns for bulbs to emerge. And right as it was starting to become spring, this happened. So let's see how the bulbs are doing. I actually see them a lot better now. They're poking up out of the grass. Still not a lot of flowers though. Got some flowers over here. See so yeah, these guys are coming up. But I'm not sure how they're gonna like this next couple days where it's gonna be below freezing again for a couple days, so you could see that. And I, I don't think this specific variety is gonna really like that. Yeah, I think this might actually die. Look, it's gonna turn, it's turning like white stem. But still yet, in between the breaks in the rain, snow and frost, we started to see signs of life emerge. The Galanthus and Aranthus were the first to emerge in the lawn where we used the bulb machine. They were quickly buried, however, by several inches of snow. So it's April and we still have snow on the ground. <laughs> this may be the last snow. We're not entirely certain, but it's really postponed the bulb show for this year. You can see the bulbs coming up. They're there but I think those that came up really early are feeling sorry for themselves because it's been snow after snow after snow. The area without the sod was far more delayed in bulb emergence. In fact, the Aranthus and the Crocus came up almost a month later, and we guess this could be because we buried them deeper or they were experiencing colder temperatures on account of the mulch layer we added to help protect the topsoil compost mix from the pelting rains we had been having throughout the fall and winter.
In mid-April, we had some nice sunny days, which encouraged some of the Fritillaria and Muscari to emerge. So it is mid-April. We've had a long, hard, cold winter and very wet season. You can probably tell because I have my mittened gloves on and a big furry jacket and a hat. It is still cold. It actually was snowing and hailing earlier today. And we have two inches of snow in the forecast tomorrow. So it's been a long, hard, cold winter. And the bulbs are still pushing through although we don't think they're at their peak. You could even see that there's some that escaped here <laughs> that probably rolled off. This is the Kianodoxa. And there's a lot of learnings that we have from seeing all this. So you can see here, this was the bulb lawn area. Now what's really interesting is that this first application that Bill did with the bulb machine, as you may recall, I think they planted it really densely here and very superficially, so really close to the surface. And you'll see that we have um, these Kianodoxa, the Aranthus, these yellow ones are just towards the tail end. These were some of the early bloomers. And then you'll see Corrigulus right here, Corrigulus Beth Evans, that's another one that we have. And then you have these coming up, and I think these are maybe the tulips, I would imagine, but we have about a third of our bulbs that need to still come up is the Muscari and this Kianodoxa just started to come up a few days ago. So this swerve here is very dense and then you'll see as you kind of move into this area, they're less dense and actually the crocuses, which you don't see anymore, the, the crocuses had come up really early and then we got maybe two or three snows and rains that came through and uh, maybe I could find one crocus, like here. Here's the one that's coming up just now. We're kind of stepping on the bulbs. <laughs> the one that we're waiting on is this area. So if you remember, this was our quote unquote bulb coffin. This is where we took a bulb sod, tossed the bulbs in, and then we put about two inches of topsoil compost on top. However, we were getting so much rain the rain was coming down and kind of knocking the soil away or turning it into a spongy mess. So I made the last minute decision, let's get some mulch to just pile on top so we don't lose all the soil and then we'll seed over it with grass and then we'll seed it over again in the springtime with grass. Seeding this low mow native lawn is a total experiment. I don't know if it'll work. And two of the grasses are warm season one of the grasses cool season. Now what that means is if you seed it in the cold season, those warm season grasses aren't going to uh, emerge. So they will wait until the warm season when to emerge. They all look very similar when they're just growing and you can see there's just tiny little bits of grass coming up, very fine. You can see it here. And so what I'm gonna do now is actually, and here's another bulb you see, so what I'm gonna do now is then reseed after the, after the freezing temperatures, and uh, then hopefully we'll see a sign, signs of more grass. But I wanna, I wanna walk on this as, as the least amount as possible. And then you'll see like a lot of bulbs underneath the tree already emerging. Those, a lot of those were, were bulb augered in, but you seriously have to be on your hands and knees to see some of the little bulbs coming up. 
And you even dug down in here and you saw they were they were deep. They were like yeah, five I was, inches. I was so concerned that I started digging and I did find <laughs> some bulbs that were rotting. Yeah, in the, in the wetness. Because they were literally five inches down because we had three inches of topsoil and then two more inches of mulch. Yeah. So, but there was also a lot of them that were still on their way and it's just a long way up. It's a long way up. Which is good up. because if, it dis if it's this cold for so long, then better to be buried a bit deeper and stay warm. Now, there hasn't been a lot of flowers here except for along the edges, you'll see if you go through here. Lots of green and a lot of flowers. And again, we had crocuses probably a week or two ago. You have the aranthus, this yellow flower that's kind of, um, you know, waning. And then you have the canadoxa, which just started to come up maybe like in the last few days. And then you have some of the crigulus. And I realized that we also have some of the Fritillaria meleagris coming up. Uh, right here, actually. Here's one about to bloom. These are gonna be really pretty. But, and then we have some of the, this is the really wet area, but we have some of these, if you look really closely, these crocuses starting to come up. And if you, when you look even closer, the grass seed is starting to take. So um, we didn't really want to plant in this area because you could even see how wet it is still from the delineation of the mulch. And then obviously that area too is really wet. So if we go over here, like this area is totally spongy. So we avoided this area altogether. And instead we're kind of planting more sedges here, which is also an experiment. Now, because I think because these bulbs got buried deeper than we would have liked because I put the mulch on, they're taking their sweet time coming up and they are coming up and it's hard to see. But if you look down here, look at all these little green bits coming up. Boom, boom. These are all the bulbs. This is not the grass, it's the bulbs. And if you keep on looking closely, you start to see the bulbs coming up. Now, did this work in its benefit? I think this year it may have because it's, such been, it's been such a cold year with like on again, off again, snow and rain. And a lot of these bulbs came up super early and got hit with all the snow and the rain. So honestly, time will tell whether this actually made any sense whatsoever. Now, if we planted these last year, we would have been in a completely different situation because last year around March 17th, we were in t-shirts working in outside and we had no snow. But this year we've had snow, we have snow in the forecast tomorrow. So we'll see how these bulbs actually react to that. I should say that some of the bulbs that I planted in this bed have come up. They got a little frostbitten this morning, oh, yeah. but these are bulbs that I planted two years ago and they just came up. So that's interesting to see. Now we had a bunch of crocuses here, which are now spent, but I bullboggered a number of tulips and crocuses and you could see those are coming up and it hasn't been really that sunny today, but these will start to open up probably tomorrow because we're gonna get a sunny day tomorrow. And um, these are starting to come up in here and they seem to be doing really well. And uh, also over here, I bulb augered in, well, didn't you really use the auger? I just used a hori hori knife, um, a number of bulbs around the same time as well. And those are blooming in the sun. They're now closed right now. But you can see all of these were planted all around the same time. And they're just starting to come up. So I think these are gonna be right on time because after tomorrow, I think our last freezing day, <laughs> can't see my fingers crossed, but their fingers crossed behind these mittens. Um, hopefully that's gonna be the last freezing day and we'll see more of a show of bulbs, but time will tell. All right, April 18th, it's snowing again. I think we're actually supposed to get six inches tonight. Bulbs are out there. I'm not sure how they'll do. So remember when I told you it was snowing? This just happened and everything is covered.
right, so you could actually see how many bulbs are poking up here in this bulb lawn. And yeah, it's mid-April and we got this snow. I think somewhere between six and 12 inches we ended up getting, but it's already started to melt. So we're hoping that this is the last of it, but I really don't know. You can see some bulbs out here too. Ugh. Man, what a year to try to find and see some of the bulbs that you planted. Just weather is not working with us. I don't know if any of these will come up after this snow. See, this is one of the fritillarias. I mean, it literally is cased in snow. I mean, speak about resilience because this one looks like it, it's bloomed in, amidst all the snow and freezing weather that we have. It's the 27th of April and it's snowing again. And tonight it's gonna be below freezing. So I'm not sure how these bulbs are gonna like that. Well, we finally hit spring here, I would say. This is the first week of May and it's just glorious. The weather is glorious. You would have never known that last week we had snow on the ground. <laughs> and, you know, we went through the great ambition of planting 70,000 bulbs several different ways. And the weather was not cooperative, but the weather is cooperative now and I think the bulbs did a very cool showing in the last hours of the last month. We had lots of bulbs blooming over the course of March and April and then getting hit down with snow. And I think what we realized is that you have to be really patient with the bulbs, especially when the weather is not conducive. But this is again, the bulb lawn where we had the tractor, the bulb tractor, insert them into the sod. And you'll see that this is, these are like the bulbs that bloom the latest. So the yellow ones, the tall yellow ones are Tulipa sylvestris, and these purple spires are the Muscari. And the ones that look a bit more like chrysanthemums are called anemones. And you can see that the color palette is more like purples, purple reds, yellows, a little white. Obviously this is pollinator heaven. We have so many bees and wasps and flies that are gracing these plants. And I think what we've also learned is, you know, oftentimes when you just have lawn, maybe you have the dandelions and we have dandelions in here, that's a good pollinator resource. But these bulbs are pretty much the only thing blooming and it's May. They're the only things blooming in March, April and pretty much May and all the other perennials that we have are just slightly late bloomers. So this provides a good smorgasbord for the insects.
So this was obviously the tractor that came in and this was very successful. First of all, what happened here? Because it looks more dense over here. Right, well, as I had mentioned earlier, this actually was probably a denser planting that was a little higher up or closer to the surface. Whereas this is a little less dense. Now, the shame in all of this is that we had 70,000 bulbs, but you can't see them all blooming at the same time. So as I had mentioned, this is like the last of the blooms. This is the last of what we'll see before June hits. And there won't be any more blooms after this. And then we'll just mow it over. So the first week of June, we'll be mowing it over. And you want the green of the leaves to stay up until about June, because this is how they're getting the food and they're putting the energy back into the bulb so they could not only emerge, but also uh, propagate. And there's two ways that these bulbs will propagate themselves. The bulbs will uh, multiply, and so that's an asexual reproduction, or as the pollinators come and pollinate these plants, they'll produce seed, and eventually they'll drop their seed into the grass and they'll multiply that way. So we have this two so part- So this is just gonna continue to grow more and more and more. More bulbs. and more bulbs. And we were lucky because we had enough bulbs to actually give it a really good show across a fairly large area. Now here, we also did with the tractor. The yes. Section. But if you look at this compared to that, why is this less of a show than over there? It's a really good question. I think that this was the last part that they had put in and this area was really wet and you could see it actually tore up the grass because as you get lower, it gets really wet. And as they were like getting into here, they were getting stuck with their tractor. So what I think I'm gonna be doing next year is I'll get some more bulbs and I'll take the bulb auger and just kind of put them into this area uh, by hand, because I think that will help. I mean, I don't have to do that. These will multiply and they'll probably move into the space, but. Um, and then you can also like, cause like, since it's more wet here, it might be beneficial to plant them more towards the surface of the ground instead of deeper in the ground, right? Because right. first of all, we were thinking, well, they're too deep. They're going to all rot and die. But then we were like, well, then the snow came down and we were like, oh, it might be good that they're deep because if they are on the surface, now they're going to get hit with the cold. Right. So this will obviously multiply, but... This will obviously multiply and they'll probably find the right depth for them. So what I was told is that usually it's the second year that they really fully establish themselves. So we're lucky to have gotten so many bulbs in this first year. Now, this is the area where we cast the bulbs. And it's hard that you could see that it's very sparse um, in some areas and very interspersed. And I actually can't remember whether the earlier bulbs, where they came out, if they came out in the same areas or if they came in, out in different areas. And I also noticed that we don't have a lot of tulips in here either. So I, I'm thinking that either we, again, like you said, planted a little bit too deep or, um, or maybe the bulbs, some of the bulbs got crushed, uh, all sorts of questions. And you can see also there's still some that are just coming up. It's cr crazy. Right. So this was, this was a really late, these were late blooming compared to that one. And it's probably largely because they don't have the protection of sod here and we mulched it. So we mulched them deeper than what we typically would have done. Yeah, because you put another layer on it. It yes. was actually now buried deeper. Than yes, that. exactly. So this one looks a little um, odd, I think, because we have to reseed the grass and you could see the patches of grass now coming in, which is great because I just reseeded it like a couple days ago because we had frost up until a couple days ago and I wanted to seed it when it wasn't frosting out. Yeah, you still have some coming up. Here. Yeah, it's so bizarre. Maybe they're just so deep that they take a lot longer to get to the surface. Yeah, and we're only in our first week of heat here and sun, believe it or not. So look at all the purple here. The purple, right on the edge. we really feathered the edge. So you could really see a defined edge 
And then the last way that we did it was bulb augering. And I'll take you over here to see that. It's a little messy because we experimented with an alternative lawn as well. This is the magnolia that Sonder you had planted, which looks amazing. It just started to bloom. We were praying it wouldn't get frostbitten and it didn't. It opened up a little later. And we wanted to match some of the bulbs with the magnolia. So you see that we have this uh, Tulipa critica hilde. So it's white with a little pink edging. And that looks just like the magnolia. I think we have some white and pink anemones. And then we have this one, Tulipa humilis. And then when it was opened earlier, but you could see the beautiful colors on that. Very striking. And then in fall, we'll have Cyclamen heterofolium, which has this beautiful ivy-shaped leaf, and it's also pink. But obviously the magnolia won't be in bloom when that's blooming. It will take over the pink color then. Yeah, we'll have that pink throughout, but in every season. So this grass is a little unkempt. We probably should have cut it before we actually had this, but these are really low growing tulips and anemones. And then you'll see in this area, this is kind of an alternative seed mix that doesn't involve any grass. So when we took out the willow, we planted this and it has all these like Johnny jump ups and everything that came up and a lot of clover. We don't think it looks quite right for the area, so we'll probably end up coming in here and seeding it with grass as well. I think this is gonna look great after we establish it over the course of a year. And these were obviously different bulbs than what we planted over there, and we used bulb augering here, and that was really successful. So those are like a few different ways that we actually planted the bulbs. And I think one of the lessons that we learned is that we just have to be patient with the weather and we'll end up seeing what it looks like next spring and if we have a dry spring or wet spring what actually happens with that and what happens with this once the sod actually gets on look at these bulbs oh yeah i planted these around the same time these are more tulips and what i've learned is like i have nice a lot a lot of blooming right here but not in the back you actually mentioned that to me this morning and i was like i should just get a darker raspberry colored tulip for the back. Yeah, so the big lesson is don't plant them in too wet areas, obviously, because they're not going to make it. And then... Don't plant them too deep. Don't plant them too deep. They're actually quite resilient. And it might take a little while for them to really come, like establish and uh, come in. So that's another thing. Here you go, here are these, these are gorgeous. White tulips with purple blue centers. And this bed has more of red, purples, and whites. So I wanted to go with that color. And I love these species tulips. That they're not too gaudy, they're not too showy, and they're short. These are the type that I think would be really wonderful in naturalizing in your lawn. And this is a uh, tulip up. I have some crocuses planted under here now, but the crocuses are done. But these have like this yellow center and they're white on the outside. And this is the only garden we haven't worked on this year. So it's a little weedy, but these came up beautifully. And again, this is a species tulip that's short. This is as tall as they get. They're not too gaudy. I'm really in love with naturalizing bulbs. And I think that it adds so much dynamism to the land not only because it's beautiful and it, it adds color and diversity to the lawn, but also because it provides a really good pollinator resource. And it's just a fun thing to see the land change over the course of several months. Um, so I highly recommend it. And we'll have to wait until next year to see how they establish in year two.